Hello everybody, this is City Scrapper. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I am back for day 26 of Christie's Beautiful Life, 30 Days of Sketches, Series 7. I have to say I liked all of the sketches that were in this series of sketches, but to me, this sketch was the most eye-catching. As soon as I saw it, I thought that is going to be a different kind of layout because the sketch was unique. There are a lot of hexagons and there's diagonals and I'm going to try to do it all. So the first thing that I did was I took this older piece of paper that I wasn't going to use, you know, I wasn't going to use the front of it, so I turned it over to the back and I am layering some papers on it on a diagonal. The papers that I'm using are from a Prima collection from a long, long time ago. This is one of my all-time favorite collections. It says Just Karina Dude Collection on the papers, and this is from way back when, when I first started going to scrapbook conventions. I bought a little of it, and then I loved it, so then I tried to find whatever I could, and I definitely have been hoarding this collection, so I'm glad, happy to say that I'm trying to use some of it up. I forgot to mention that the sketch says that it was created by Scrap Friends. And I also wanted to mention one other thing. On so many of my videos, I'm talking about how I use older collections or very old collections, and it probably sounds like I never buy anything new. And I do buy new collections. I buy them way more than I should. However, when I look at certain photos, I just kind of get an idea of what papers that I have in my stash that I think will look good with them. And it doesn't matter to me if it's a brand new paper or a really old paper. I just will look at the photos and kind of get an idea of what style and what colors of paper that I want to use. And then I like having a large variety of papers to choose from. So for this particular set of photos, I thought that these papers, you know, in my mind, they just went together. So that's why I'm always talking about having old collections. I don't mind if something is old. I don't consider it to be a bad thing. I welcome my older collections and I'm just as excited to use them as I am to use my new materials because I try to only pick things that I absolutely love. And if I decide that I bought something and I didn't end up liking it, then that is something that I will get rid of. But that doesn't happen too often. I usually just pick things that I really like. So, sorry, I kind of went on a little bit about that, but in the meantime, you could see that I was adding papers on a diagonal, and I'm using little scraps of paper that are in the envelope where I keep this collection, and I like the idea of having different widths of stripes, and you could see in the sketch there's a lot of layering and different size diagonals happening, so I'm just trying to match some of that. In order to make the hexagons, I didn't have anything that was that large, and right now my silhouette is not being cooperative. So I just went on the internet and I just went to hexagon images and I just printed out some images in different sizes. And so I have three different sizes of hexagons. Two of them are going to have the photos, like in the sketch, and then one of them is going to be for my journaling. So I'm just following along with the sketch. I do have those hexagon punches, but those are really small. But I do make a couple of little embellishments using those. I have the three different size Fiskars hexagon punches, and I've been using them a lot lately. I definitely got my money's worth out of them uh, with a lot of the hexagon sketches that I've been using uh, recently. Some of them in this series of sketches. If you look in the sketch, there is a line that goes across and then down and then continues going across the page. And I really liked that particular line. So I wanted to recreate that on the layout. And so I decided to use this black paper. This is not from the collection. This was in my scrap bin of black paper. And you can see here that I used the hexagon punch to punch out some pattern paper. And then I backed it with some black paper and I made those two hexagons that are on the background. The photos that I'm using are of my older daughter. She went to an outdoor 
kind of concert, one of those like festival type things. And she met this tattoo artist named Ryan Ashley. And this tattoo artist was later on a show on TV called Ink Masters. And I watched it with my daughter and she became very well known after that. But this was from before that appearance on Ink Masters. And so my daughter was very excited to meet her. Uh, I don't personally have any tattoos, but appreciating art, I have to say that this woman is very talented and she makes really beautiful tattoos um, that my daughter really liked. She followed her on Instagram for a long time and she thought she was really cool. So she was really excited to meet her. And then we were, of course, rooting for her when she was on Ink Masters. She's just, like I said, outrageously talented. So I had to hand cut out those hexagons because, like I said, I don't have any way of cutting them out. So I just used those hexagons that I had printed out as templates. And then I backed each one on some white and some black cardstock. And these are definitely not perfect hexagons, but I think they're close enough to hexagons to work. And I like backing all of the photos and all of the hexagons on the black cardstock. The background is so busy with patterns that I thought that this would help it stand out a little bit. So all of those hexagons that I put on the background are mounted on some black cardstock. I just feel like it makes the layout more readable than if I hadn't. This is the hexagon I'm going to be putting the journaling on. And I always feel like no matter how big the journaling block is, it's never quite big enough. I have other pages that are going to be on the same subject, so if I can't fit everything in on this particular page, then I'll just add whatever else I want to say on some of the other pages that I'm going to uh, document this day on. And I don't journal on every one of my pages because when I'm journaling a vacation or like a special day, I usually have separate journaling that I put on other page protectors, usually smaller page protectors in the album. But this is not a day like that, so the journaling has to go right on the page. You could see here that I'm using some fun foam and I am popping up both of the photos on some fun foam. You can see that the photos kind of face in different directions and I did that because I was kind of thinking that it almost looked like the hexagons were tumbling on that diagonal across the page, so I thought it would be kind of cool to rotate the second photo a little bit. So once I have the photos mounted to the background using some ATG adhesive, I decide that I'm going to pop up the little green hexagon as well. So I put a little bit of foam on the back of that, and I pop that up off the background. And I decided to add another strip of this black paper. I liked the way that looked, and I thought that putting a little bit on both sides would be a nice addition. So I added that on. And now I decided that I want to switch up that journaling block just a little bit. So I'm using that hexagon as a little template, and I'm cutting out some of this diagonal paper, I guess you could call it, or diamond paper. And I'm mounting that on the black cardstock, and then I'm going to cut down that white paper a little bit smaller. So I just said that the journaling block wasn't big enough, and now I'm cutting it down even smaller. But I do manage to fit a good amount of journaling on that block, and this is where you could really see that those hexagons are really not perfectly straight or perfectly symmetrical, but that's okay. I don't think you could really tell. So now I'm tracing around the outside of the big cluster that I had. I wanted to put on a piece of black paper, but I was afraid if I just used black paper, it would just look kind of like a big void. So I wanted to add a little bit of texture to this cardstock. So I'm using this stencil and I'll put the name of the stencil and the manufacturer in the description box. This is a stencil I like very much. And I'm putting some Heidi Swap texture paste through it. And you can see that I'm putting the stencil on the same angle, 
you know, the dots are on the same angle, the lines and the dots are on the same angle as the uh, pattern paper. And I just like this little bit of texture that's added to the background. It's supposed to be black, but I find that it's a little bit more like dark gray. It's very close to black, but I just feel like with the shininess and um, with the texture, it'll just add a little something to the background. So now I'm using the stencil that I have, and I don't know why I keep using the stencil because the lines are too wide, up, you know, that they're too far apart from each other, and I always go back in and have to draw more lines. So I don't know. I don't know that it helps me all the time, but it's a starting place, I guess, uh, to draw the lines. And that green, like, you know, pencil looking item off to the right, that's an eraser. And I really like those erasers. They're pure white and they don't smudge anything. Sometimes when the eraser is pink and it's not the best eraser, it'll make like a pink line on the paper. So I like that eraser. It's a pure white and it never makes any smudges or anything. And I don't know where I got that from. I've had it for quite a while. So you can see that I'm adding a piece of black cardstock behind the white um, paper that's going to go on the journaling card. As soon as I had put the white on the pattern paper, I kind of knew that I was going to add that later on. So I'm just attaching down the base and I didn't attach down the part where I'm going to put the journaling. I'm going to attach that down later after I'm done with the journaling. Now I'm going in with some puffy stickers and hearts. These are Freckled Fawn brand. And I just try to scatter those a little bit around the page. I do end up moving them around quite a bit. And I'm going through some of my puffy stickers and some other embellishments and just trying to pick out some that I think will go with this subject and with the colors. And I finally decide to attach that piece down on top of the black paper. And then I added that puffy sticker underneath the bottom photo. It says this happened. And then that sticker that I just added to the green hexagon that says story. And then I found these black epoxy stickers and those are Bella Boulevard stickers. So I thought those would be a good addition to the page since they're black and they're also hexagons. I'm now using some Pink Press Studio letters. They're puffy white letters, and I use two different collections. And this title my younger daughter came up with because she comes up with some really good titles. So I was like, what do you think I should call this? So between my older daughter and my younger daughter, they kind of were doing some brainstorming, and they came up with Nice Tattoo Meet You. <laughs> so I thought that was cute. I'm not very good with titles, so any help that I can get is very appreciated. So here I'm lining these up and I do have to use some glue to attach them down because of the texture paste that's on the background. You can see here that I'm using my T-square to make sure that they are straight. And it actually was kind of helpful that the letters didn't stick too well to the background because I do have to reposition them a little bit. Usually I put the stickers down. I have a lot of confidence when I put them down and then I generally have to peel them back up again. So these were really easy to reposition. So now I am thinking that I wanna try to keep these embellishments close to the photos. And that's something I do a lot. I'll spread the stickers and the embellishments all over the place. And in the end, I end up drawing them in and bringing them closer to the photos. I also use these little puffy stickers. I think those are from Joann's. You can see that I did my journaling, so I attached that down to the hexagon I had set aside for my uh, as my journaling block. And now I'm using these feathers. These are recollection stickers that I got from Michaels uh, at their $1 sticker sale they had a few months back. And I end up just using these two feathers around the title. I thought they were a great color and I thought that they matched the layout pretty well. So that was the final touch and that completes the layout.
Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope if you like this video, you'll give it a thumbs up. And I hope you'll check out the links to all the other scrapbookers following along with this challenge in the description box. I hope that everybody has a fantastic day. And I hope to see you back tomorrow for day 27 of Christy's Beautiful Life, 30 Days of Sketches. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>